Greetings, sir and sirettes, and welcome back to From the Depths with me, Lathrix. And of course, welcome back to the sandbox mode for a very brief experiment before we get back into the campaign itself. So in the last video, the one question I kept asking is that do multiple inputs actually make a difference? And of course by inputs, I mean the ammo intakes. Having multiple of these to a single belt-fed autoloader and the ammo clips Will that cause the ammo clips to reload faster? I'm really hoping the answer is yes. Now, at one point in the past, it did not make a difference. Someone gave me a video of someone testing it. It simply didn't, and I'm not sure how long that stayed in the game. But because of that, I've always been a bit skeptical about doing these types of builds. Again, I am hoping I am very much wrong. So what we have is one autoloader here with a load of ammo intakes all over the ammo clip and all over the belt-fed autoloader itself. Over here we have a single belt-fed autoloader intake, and over here we have the intake on the ammo clip instead. So we're also going to be testing if there's a difference between feeding it into the ammo clip or feeding it into the autoloader itself, because some people have said that makes a difference as well. And I do like to learn in this game. So here we go. We are selecting a very basic shell type, and off we go. And as we can see, yeah, multiple inputs do indeed make a huge difference. Now, with the other two, it doesn't seem to be making a difference. But as you can see, this is very important because it means once all of these shells are used up, it won't take too long until the ammo clips are completely full again, which will activate the belt-fed autoloaders. Yeah, these two are really lagging behind. For a second there, it looked like this one was slightly faster. Let's watch these two closely now. Yep, that's got one more. Now this has got one more. For some reason, this one seems to be a little bit delayed. But not by much. And it doesn't seem to be getting any further away. But it does seem like this one happens first, then this one occurs. One for you. Waiting. One for you. Then we wait. This one's already completely filled. Okay, so with that in mind, we're going to jump on board the Lathrixian hauler. Hello there, my lovely. And we're going to be doing a little bit of retrofitting to the turret. The reason being, in the last video, I extended the clip size quite dramatically. Well, I doubled it, but I took away three of four of the ammo intakes. Essentially, quarter of the reload speed for double the duration of fire, which... I still think is actually a worthwhile trade, because honestly, battles just don't last that long. I've never seen a battle. Well, I rarely see battles, actually, because it did happen once in this campaign so far, where all of the shells are used up in one of the regular turrets. So, it's not really too much of an issue. So, what we need to do is figure out where we can actually add some more inputs. So already we have the intakes over here, and yes, intake, not input. I don't know why I always get that wrong, but I do. How about if we do this? So we turn these around, like so. Then these should be able to fit in. Aha! But if I put one here, can this still rotate? That we will need to find out. But if this is correct, it means we can add two more inputs, intakes, to each of these. Up, of course, until the point where we've run out of maximum volume. Either way, let's just make sure this can still turn. Now I've added all of those extra inputs, intakes, things. Sadly, no, it can't rotate if we have the input over here, which makes complete sense. However, with this one, I believe it can rotate. So, once again, now controlling the turret, and yes, indeed, it can turn. So, we can at least double the reload speed from the last video. So, we're essentially only halving it. So, we're halving the reload speed and doubling the amount of shells it can hold. So, double the length of fire, the duration of fire, for half of the reload speed, which I really think is worth it, honestly. So, let's go ahead, change it all around, retrofit the turret, and then we're pretty much good to go back into the campaign. The last thing I would like to quickly do before we go ahead back into the campaign is to min-max these torpedoes a little bit, because right now, 
they aren't really the best. We don't need this much fuel, and honestly, we don't need these many fins, but we do need the one turn element, so you can go there. And, actually, what I'm going to do is add some fragment warheads. Now, these are not as good as explosive when it comes to exploding underwater, since explosive warheads get a bonus to their damage if they explode underwater. But, if you combine the two, it can make a very nasty combo. So, let's go ahead and do that. And we likely will not need more than one fuel tank. The reason is, the torpedo propellers are very, very efficient. It takes a very long time to ever run out of fuel. So most likely, this will be okay. Although I am a little bit tempted to have two fuel tanks, I'm almost certain this will be okay. Almost certain. Not certain enough. There we go. And that will be the finished design. I will see how they do, I'll do a few test runs with them, and there's a good chance one fuel tank will be removed, so that once again they're very, very agile. Okay, so we're still not back in the campaign just yet, and the reason is there was a lot of cleaning up to do. As you can see, we are now no longer near the allowable volume limit, or at least we're not as close as before. We're still pretty close, but not quite as bad. The reason is, it turns out, for some reason, I had two dud missiles at the back, which had fins, which had the fuel tanks and the thruster, and then nothing else. They were simply dropping into the water, which I think someone, actually several people, noticed in the comment section, and I just thought they were talking about the... what are you called here? The torpedoes. But of course, that wasn't the case. So that was very, very odd. I've also removed all of the missile winches for the time being, which means if we want to, we could add a couple more missiles, or we could upgrade this section here, the anti-missile missiles. And how to do that would be relatively easy. If we add one more gantry section, so let's just actually look what we're doing for a second, like so, we could very easily just go active radar seeker and fins. This way, these missiles will actually head towards the enemy, which will be quite interesting, honestly, because it means they're not just going outwards when this craft is going forwards, which has had limited success. I think this would be slightly more successful, and even if not, it would be a lot more fun to watch. So let's spawn in an enemy and see how they work. There we go, off they go, and they should be going towards the enemy with the rest of the missiles, which they are. Which means they are sticking nearby, although this does mean we need a friend or foe attachment. Otherwise this happens, as you can see the missiles are actually trying to hit us. Yeah, let's quickly add friend or foe. So missiles, identify friend or foe. So from now on, these lovely little radar seeking missiles won't go for our butt. I'll go for the enemy's butt instead. The final change, we are going to be removing that fuel tank and we are going to be adding ballast tanks instead. This way we can hit submarines and it turns out we definitely don't need more than one fuel tank. Okay, so one actual final change. We are adding the target prediction guidance to all of the regular missiles. The reason is, although I don't particularly like this item that much, it is still a really, really good module to add to the missile. Essentially, it changes the missile's behaviour. You can do something very similar, and honestly better, by using a Lua script, but this is the simple version. Instead of the missile simply going for the target and thus chasing the target, it will try and figure out where the target is going to be in a set amount of time and then intercept them there. This makes them much better against things like the enemy helicopter and the enemy water skimmer, the fast assault vehicle, whatever it's actually called. It makes it so the missiles will actually hit the targets rather than chasing them behind. Several people commented about adding this item and although normally I prefer adding an extra set of fins or some more fuel or more water heads, in this case, this is definitely the correct idea. So hopefully now, with all those changes, the Lathrixian version of the hauler is going to be absolutely brutal. I've also added some more cooling vents to the turret itself, which means its fire rate has, has now increased from 500 up to 750, which is going to be very, very nice indeed. So now, finally, 
back into the campaign. It looks like, once again, the enemy faction are still using the same gathering pods, which is absolutely fine for me, because I'm getting pretty good at stealing them at this point. We have had a lot of experience with this. And once again, the enemy is incredibly slow, which is a shame. I have been reading everyone's comments, including some of the people who are behind the designs of the enemy we're currently facing, and apparently a lot of the enemies still need some updates. For instance, the, what's it called, the juggler, or similar to that, shouldn't actually have repair bots, as it is against the rules, but it simply got through since this is such a new campaign, and the artillery will soon be fixed, so it actually spawns above the water rather than just sinking which would be very nice indeed so against us we have the artillery the submarine the mothership which is worth 85,000 materials okay then another submarine a helicopter and a helicopter I'm going to try and wait a little bit until it's at least daytime although it looks like this area of the map is always raining so Let's just wait a while. But seriously, what on earth is that mothership going to be? I have no idea. Okay then, here we go. It's now time for the battle, since it's now actually daytime. So Blargles do the usual and go round the side, try and be as protective as possible. Minicorn, which I really want to actually update soon. You can go here and here. The tank can go somewhere in the middle because that's just kind of what it does. And am I missing a Blargle? Why are you down there? I have no idea what you're doing down there, but please move over here instead so you can flank them. And we will go somewhere a little bit further back. Somewhere like there. Okay, begin the battle. Please be bright than I think it is. Okay, it's pretty bright. Whoa, loads of lag. Loads and loads of it. Okay, so where is the mothership? Are you the mothership? Um... Oh, apparently not everything spawned in. Okay, let's increase that a little bit. Oh, no, you're the mothership, and you two are the minions, I suppose? Although, that looks really glitchy. Is that meant to be several? Oh, whoa. Okay, well, that spawned in weirdly and facing the wrong direction, but... Okay, so that's the mothership then, I imagine. That's the centerpiece. And then all of these rings? It's really hard to tell right now. It looks like they're rings. I imagine they go around the outside. I have seen a similar design in the regular campaign. At least, a similar concept, I should say. Not similar design. The enemy artillery is already being absolutely peppered with shells, which I am absolutely fine with. Let's get off the controls. There we go. And yeah, that's what's causing all the lag. The enemy mothership. That is ridiculous. Oh, okay. And it looks like the mothership itself has a particle cannon. So the circles have missiles and the center has that. Makes sense to me. Incoming shots from the Lathrixian hauler. The stolen design, of course. One of the helicopters is taking several Blargle missiles to the side. The other one is... Ooh, that looked really painful. I was about to say it's being battered by the Minicorn, but that just took a Parthal Cannon to the face, and it instantly lost one of its weapons. Okay, now that looks better. Although I think we may have broke it. Whoa, that looks really interesting. It just spawned in really bizarrely. It's hard to tell what's going on with everything so split up. Let's just pause time for a second... So there's the enemy sub, which is taking a little bit of damage, although he's mostly alive. Whatever that was is now dead, I'm assuming the artillery. Um, the tank is still going just fine, okay. One of the minicorns has taken half its health away, and the bloggles are probably somewhere shooting missiles, okay. Oh, 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 bad, 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 bad. The hauler just took, like, six missiles to the side and has just about survived. I have also added some more heavy armor to the front of the hauler, so hopefully that is now its strong point. Oh, thankfully, the hauler's main gun is focusing on the mothership's main vehicle. Still a ridiculous design, though. If we win, though, we do get a lot of resources here. Incoming missiles, please don't hit the turret. Thank you. And again, just scraping off the side. Thankfully, those missiles have been hitting quite badly in terms of placements. 
a few large explosions there. A fair few of the missiles were also deflected by the anti-missile missiles on this craft, so hopefully that can keep up. As you can see, there they go, the missiles being distracted. The hauler proving to be easily one of my favourite designs of all time from any campaign. Especially now I've retrofitted it to my own specifications. That was a very messy fight, got to be honest. Very, very messy fight. Is that my tank? No, it's something underneath my tank. The tank has taken quite a bit of damage, though, in terms of its main vehicle. Seems like we may have rammed the, the sub to death there. Oh, just about surviving. A bit of heavy armor just got peeled off. Heavy armor is such a good way to defend against fragments. Our missiles are bigger than your missiles. Huh, the tank actually going on land a little bit there. There we go, proving that it's totally worth making this an all-terrain vehicle. It seems like the enemy the enemy missiles aren't too powerful. Even if I do call the enemy the enemy, as I just did. Our designs do seem to be crushing the enemy, and the hauler is still very, very happily alive as well. Thank you, stolen design. Once again, all credit to the original designer there. All I've done is made the gun a bit bigger. And the missiles a bit nastier. And a bit of e extra heavy armor. But once again, the main designer there deserves all the credit. Okay, so a victory. The hauler managed to heal back to full health. And you two need to heal up. But ultimately, that was pretty good. What we're going to do, though, before we go into the next battle, where we simply steal the gathering pod, we're going to jump back into the sandbox mode and have a quick look at the mothership properly. Because I'm just really curious. Here we are in the sandbox mode and what we're looking for is that right there, the mothership. Okay then. So this is what happens when it actually spawns in the air. Okay, go on, go to the correct place, thank you. It almost looks like a scarab to me. Yeah, there's the Partal Cannon stuff, and where's the actual firing point, though? Oh, it's looking this way, not this way. Okay, I kind of had that reversed. Wow, maybe that was one of the problems, then. I really think this spawned backwards. It looks like it wasn't actually facing us, which really is a shame. So each of these, then, are just missiles, and... I don't actually know what that block is, to be perfectly honest. I don't think it really matters all that much. And then it has a load of... What on earth was that on the inside? Those steam boy... Oh, I see. So each of these has an engine which ferries energy to the main vehicle, the mothership core. It, let's call it the core. The mothership core here. So this one doesn't need any engines of its own because it's simply siphoning power from the things around it. Oh, what a neat idea. Okay, let's spawn in, in an enemy. Oh, look, there's one of those. Kill it. Facing the wrong way again, so that's going to take a little while. Yeah, those missiles are not particularly potent. Woo. Although that particle cannon shot did do the job. I mean, it did, to be fair, it did cut through heavy armor, three layers of it, and then destroy the main turret on the minicorn. Whoa, that looks awesome. Missiles kind of going everywhere, though. Got to be honest. Still really cool, though. I, su I suppose the problem is, with making them look as cool as they are, those missiles aren't really detecting what's directly in front of them. I wonder if they could potentially be spun so they face forwards. Anyway, far too much time on the list. Let's get back into the main campaign and let's capture that gathering pod. Turning off. Turning off. As usual, here we go back into the campaign and now it's time to do some capturing so we've all seen it before i'm going to step back here and control the tank we're going to get nice and close shoot down one of its thrusters which causes it to sink and then we're going to capture it nice simple efficient and gloriously explosive okay that's close enough i just accidentally shot a little bit so there's already a tiny bit of damage there and now let's finish it off 
No, no ramming us. That's bad. Ow. You somewhat dented my metal. And now we do the usual capturing. Oh, hello. Thankfully, PID systems, very, very frail. Sadly, metal, less so. Oh, come on. Not quite what I meant there, honestly. Okay. That was a bit of a failure. So what just happened is that... As I was shooting it, I was causing it to sink faster than usual, and it got so low in the water, and went under 80% health apparently, and thus, it killed itself. So what we're going to need to do is jump over to the other gathering pod. Let's spawn it in, there we go. Let's save the vehicle so we actually have the gathering pod blueprint. There we are, gathering pod just as it is. Oh, we already have it. Well, now we have it again. It's definitely the correct one. We jump back over to here, and then we spawn in the gathering pod, letting the tank build it. Now, sadly, it is actually quite expensive. It is a rather interesting build, but it's not particularly resource efficient. But I just want one. We have one on every other resource zone except for the first one, which has the Doom Bus, so we may as well do this again. Something is really dawning on me. The further we go north, the more I realize that the Scarlet Dawn is going to have absolutely no space. As you can see, there's only three tiles left, and we haven't even found the boss section yet for the faction we're currently fighting. So, where are the Scarlet Dawn going to be? Are they going to be just their base? Is it like a boss fight? I'm kind of speculating here, but I have no idea. So... Let's have a quick look in the... No, it's not in the campaign options. It's in... Yeah, I can't actually remember where this is, but somewhere there is the... You win by doing this. There we go. The victory conditions. Oh. I did see this at the start. So, as you can see here, there's the corporate HQs. Then there's this, the nebula. That's interesting. Now, of course, this Force Corporate HQ here is the one we stole, which I still need to scrap at some point, so we can do that nice and easily. Still, though, very, very interesting. So, the Nebula is what we're going to be fighting. I have absolutely no idea what that is. And I'm hoping it's something pretty darn cool, honestly. And, now, whilst I'm thinking about it, this is the Corporate HQ. Isn't it beautiful? Let's get rid of it. And it's scrapped. There we go. Lovely jabbly. Uh, do I need one of my vehicles to get here to actually get the money? No, we now have the money. We could afford a second end game or a second hauler if we so desire. And I'm kind of tempted, honestly. Lathrixian hauler, congratulations. You are being duplicated. Which is honestly going to take quite some time. But either way, it does mean we now have two of the Lathrixian haulers, two Blargles, two Minicorn, and of course, a single endgame. The haulers certainly represent to me our strongest force. And there is the enemy boss on the very last tile. So how does this work then? Do we simply kill the last HQ when the boss spawns? Or is there something I'm really missing here? Also, why on earth are you reinforcing so slowly? I know I've already grabbed one of your resource zones, but did you only have one resource zone or two? I'm really confused. Let's kill stuff. At this point, Lathrix remembers that actually he had captured both of the enemy resource zones because this also belonged to the Twilight R&D. And we have a fight on our hands. We have just went into the enemy territory. Okay, let's get a nice bit closer first of all. Whoa, they have two mothership. This is going to be so laggy, it's going to be ridiculous. On the upside, we are going to be completely surrounding them, so that's a very big thing for us. And of course, we now have two of the haulers, so 
two of our more powerful vehicles. Although in the sandbox mode, technically speaking, the tank still wins. Because of the amount of heavy armor on the tank, the missiles and even the armor penetration shells, which I've now given the hauler, simply can't kill it in time. All of the tank's firepower, which is still far higher, kills the hauler before the hauler can kill the end game. But it's very close. Which you would kind of expect since their cost is so similar. 45,000 for the endgame and 60,000 for the hauler. And of course the hauler does have the advantage of being far quicker and a flyer. So that's where it's kind of paying its due. Okay, let's put all of these here and both of the haulers are flying. Let's make sure we're on one of the haulers because that's the safest place we can be really since it actually has a cockpit. And hopefully this goes well. This will be the second to last fight before we kill the enemy HQ, and then I have no idea what's happening with the Scarlet Dawn at this point. Okay, who's spawning everyone? Thank you. And let's pause time just for a sec. Oh, great. Fog. Because I love battles where I can't see a sodding thing. Seriously, from the depths devs, please just let me turn off weather in the campaigns. It's hideous to try and play through. Um... Oh, I thought you... I, I honestly thought this was exploding because of all that smoke. No, it's just missiles. Missiles absolutely everywhere. Okay, I can see both of the mothership. It seems like this time they are coming out of the water a lot more effectively. Oh, the tank hitting the fast assault craft very early on. So many missiles coming from the mothership, and then the tank is also taking out the enemy artillery. There's the Blargle firing away. Hopefully the missiles hit the main body, not the side ones. Well, one of them did. That's good. The enemy fast assault craft are going flying by everything else. Seemingly not really hitting all that much, though, thankfully. The parcel cannon pretty much missing there, which is great for us. So the minicorn is still up and running completely effectively. The other two fast assault craft seem to be focusing on one of the minicorn. Although one is sort of flying now, and the other one hitting the land. One helicopter is harassing the hauler and actually doing a really good job. Lots of shots there hitting the hauler, which is actually friendly fire. Loads of missiles there focusing on one section and doing some serious internal damage. One of the haulers is very badly hurt now. The helicopter there being focused by the main turret, hitting the back section several times. Sadly, the missiles were being distracted by the flares. Thankfully, so were a lot of the enemy missiles, so... Yay for that. One of the motherships have simply fallen into the water. Now, the annoying thing is, it looks like they're all healing each other, so that's going to take forever, and honestly, maybe a loss for us. Oh god, that's so bad. Please stop hitting one area. Yep. Yep, yep, even though those missiles aren't particularly powerful, that was some serious internal damage. A lot of stuff just, just fell out. In fact, it completely gutted the entire missile system. So that completely turned this hauler off. That hauler can no longer fire back, so it's pretty much just going to sit there. Is that the enemy helicopter? Is that really still alive? Really high up. I didn't realize it went so high. Really wishing the Blargle's missiles had the target guidance. Yeah, that hole is just... Thankfully, the missiles keep on hitting the really heavily defended back section, since that has three layers of heavy armor now. Heavy armor now. Heavy army? I am not talking well today. But yeah, those missiles are so weak. How many... Oh, they're single warheads. No wonder they're so weak. For reference, the missiles on the hauler are five times more powerful. Yep, there goes the ammo store, and the hauler is still pretty much just there. The missiles there being distracted very annoyingly. Are any of these actually dying, or are they just healing each other? Is the main core alive anywhere? If not, we could... No, yeah, the, the core is alive, and since it's not holding them, they can now heal the core. Lots of damage on our part. The haulers are all still there. Well, one of the haulers' AI is gone. Both of the minicorns are still alive. The tank has been killed. The end game is no longer with us, so that got killed pretty early on by the looks of things. Most likely from the particle cannon. Sadly, I didn't see it happen, though.
That's looking so bad. Thankfully, several of them are now dying, and the gun has just reloaded on the second hauler. And they're actually healing each other. Costing us a fortune, though, in repairs. The Blargles are also doing a fantastic job, though. Their torpedoes are really doing some serious damage. It's just hard to see. Actually, let's have a good look, see. Torpedoes? Here they come. All of these are from the Blargles. So, actually, the Blargles have been doing the vast majority of the damage. And, really, without them, we would have lost this. There we go. As you can see, really, really catastrophic damage when these torpedoes hit. They are stronger than the torpedoes from the haulers. So basically, the haulers have tanked, the Blargles have done damage, along with the Minicorn, and the regular tank sort of just died. Much closer fight, though. Thankfully, the damage looks like it is less than it actually is, thanks to the Minicorn's ability to heal. Oh. I say that as one is actually dead. Yep, one of the Minicorn is lost, so we've lost the tank and we've lost one of our gunboats. The hauler was almost killed, but thankfully healed, and thank thankfully a lot of heavy armor will massively negate the damage from a single warhead. Who will claim the last few kills? Well, here's the Blargle, the Blargle torpedoes. Clearly, I need some sleep right now, because my speech has gone. And victory! Oh, that poor hauler, look at that. Help me, please. I wonder something, actually. I didn't check this. Uh, Hauler, with your lovely rotor blades, are they aren't always up. They are. That's how that works. Okay, so essentially, even if these are sideways, they will always put their thrust upwards into the sky, so it doesn't matter their orientation. Okay, well, there we are. A fair bit of damage sustained, so going to have to do a lot of repair work there, especially since the end game costs us 45,000 resource. But then in the next episode, we will be killing the enemy HQ, and then we're going to see what happens with the Scarlet Dawn. So thank you so much for watching. If you have enjoyed the video, then of course, likes, favourites, shares, comments, all that good stuff helps out me, helps out the channel, and most importantly, shows that From the Depths is a series you wish to see continued in the future. I think a Lathrixian victory is going to be in the next episode, or the episode afterwards. And who says I can't finish a campaign? Even though I'm still one episode away from finishing Ashes of the Empire. Yeah, thank you for watching, and goodbye.